Okay, thank you all for waiting. I think I want to get started here, just jump right into it. Not too much of an introduction this time. Um, I'll give a second for anybody who wants to jump in who's a little late, and then we'll get going. Um, but while we're doing that, I'm going to review what we did last time. So basically, we introduced the concept of uh, packet loss compensation through using input buffers. What we did was, let me pull it up here. Uh, we created a input history, uh, basically our last um, n frames of input. We sent that history over to, where is that at? Um, yeah, we sent that input history over the network in our input, uh, our network packet, just a fixed number of frames, in this case 10, it's kind of arbitrary, we could change that, and it lets us compensate for any uh, missed packets uh, that mm, they got lost because of network traffic or any of those issues. Um, not too complicated stuff, it seems to work, but the problem is we ran into uh, a bug which happens, and you should expect to run into bugs, which is we had um, a desynchronization between our two games. I can demonstrate that here real quick. Um, as you probably can see right now, they're both at uh, the same position right now, but if I start moving uh, these characters for a bit, eventually they'll desync um, one side or the other. Might take a second here, depending on the quality of the network here. Well, I'm technically running on my one machine, but if I can't get it to desync here, uh, I will add some uh, packet delay. 
So seems to be staying pretty synced right now. Funny enough, last time it kind of desynced him almost immediately. Uh, so we can get the work. The jump back and forth between these two windows. Well, it's still synced. Let me add some packet loss here. Uh, it's a good uh, chance to point out a tool that I use. It's called um, Clumsy. You can look for it on GitHub. But it lets you just add input or just packet loss, packet delay um, to your network traffic. Uh, it will increase the chances of having something like a desync. So I'm just going to increase it to 100 milliseconds here. I think that's for for inbound and outbound separately. So you can see how it gets chunky here. <laughs> Uh, this is a tool for testing how good your netcode is, too. So, you just check it out. Um, so, yeah, it looks like we got a desync now. I can stop this. We got uh, on player one side, it's uh, the P1 position is a little off from the P, uh, P1 position on player two. Cool. So, how do we detect this? Let me close this real quick. Um, so basically there's two kinds of um, desynchronization you could see in this kind of game that you, you know, deter deterministic game simulation. Well, one obviously is if your code isn't deterministic, meaning, as you probably know from watching my previous streams, basically for every game simulation frame, you need to apply the same input on both sides. If you don't apply the same input on both sides, you'll see different results and thus we have a desync. So basically, you need to apply the same input on both sides every frame. Um, so, but the other issue is, well, let's, let's back up a little bit. Uh, so we can assume in this case, our game simulation is very simple. It's probably not the game simulation that's desyncing. So the other main issue is the inputs uh, you're applying might be different, right? That's the thing we're going to look for this time. We want to make sure that our code is properly applying the same inputs on both sides, uh, both player inputs for both players on both clients at the same time or on the same frame. So what, the way we're going to do that is, uh, I actually went ahead and prepared this already, but we have, I hope you guys can hear me just fine. Yeah, cool. If you can't hear me, you see my mouth moving, I guess, uh, <laughs> Let me let me know if you hear me, uh, but yeah, say hi or whatever. Okay, so cool. Actually, I need to jump in here real quick and turn on this dynamic change thing. Eh, we're good for now. Anyway, um, so I went ahead and prepared a uh, new log file. So we're, the idea is we're gonna like log the input on both sides for the each frame. So that we can see which input was actually used on that particular frame and then we're going to compare the two log files to see what was different and if we had a desync caused by input uh, being applied on the wrong uh, different input being applied on the particular frame we'll see a difference in the log file so actually i went ahead and did that already for you guys um let's see i put it in the common file so i made this new sync log function this that we'll use, and it's just going to output to uh, the sync log file. And I already set that up to just dump out into the client and host folders so that we can easily compare. Um, and where I implemented that was here in our game simulation function. We actually want to look at, we want to be very careful with this. We want to be sure that we're going to log the actual input that was used on that frame. Otherwise, we might not see the issue, right? So here I'm just actually taking the uh, input directly for player one and player two, logging that out using this new sync log file. Or so, yeah, yeah. Okay. And since this is already running, we already have a log. Um, the tool I, I like to use is called Beyond Compare. It's pretty common in the industry. Um, you can use something like Merge or even Diff if you want to. Do we have diff in PowerShell? I'm not sure. Yeah, you can probably do something like that. Diff uh, client. Oh, my, not diff, but something like vim diff. Is it, is, do we have vim diff? Yeah, anyway, 
ignoring that, let's just look at uh, our file. So we can see we start with the same inputs. Player one, player two is just input value is zero here, right? But when we get to the first difference, what do we see? Okay. So this is the host over here where my pointer is client. Host is player one, client is player two. Uh, we can see at frame 438 on the host side that the, this is when we have our first input, right? And it's a value of two. And on the player two side, it's value zero. So it looks like we're getting the right value for input, but one frame later. Uh, I want to double check that. So if you look at the second difference, it looks like our input goes back to zero, which means we release the input. And it gets that value on the player two, two client side for player one, one frame later. So we have a difference of one frame of when we're applying this input. Uh, to check this, uh, actually, so it's one frame. Where does that one frame come from? It's probably from, or it's, it's being affected by the input delay, right? So if we, we can just guess if we increase the input delay, we're not going to see a one frame difference here. We're going to see a multiple frame difference. So uh, let me go ahead and change the input delay um, to, um, say four, well, let's do five. Okay. And let's rebuild the game and rerun it. Cool. Uh, run the game. I probably get to feel a little bit input delay on this side. Okay. And then let's check the difference in the file. Okay. First, first difference. Whoops. Oof. So what, what do we see here? On the player one side, once we uh, apply the input at value two, it comes much later now. We can see 113 here, I don't know, frame 118 here. Hey, that's a difference of five frames. So there is definitely a direct relationship between the input delay and uh, the amount, how far um, or how late we've applied the inputs here. So we did something wrong on uh, uh, probably on our game simulation side, right? We applied the wrong input, but the question is, do we apply it for the host or the, oh, sorry, do we apply it locally on the wrong frame or do we tell our client, or sorry, our opponent the wrong frame for that input? Um, long story short, I'm gonna guess that it's on our side because um, I already did this already. So, um, we look at our game simulation update block here. Um, before we update the simulation, we set our local side to get input history, uh, local side frame count plus input delay, and then um, for our opponent side, we do frame count. The thing is, and which is I've already noticed already, is this is the bug here. <laughs> We didn't need to actually apply the input delay here because when we pull our inputs, uh, when we actually record our input history up here at the uh, um, input po pulling code, so we record it in this net input buffer uh, variable and then we set it to our input history. But we already do that with an input delay here. So say we have five frames of input delay, we apply that input on frame five, right? Uh, so it's going to be used five frames later. So we don't need to double down on that in input uh, input delay. So that's probably where the bug is. So let's remove that input delay and redo this. So now we're actually using the same frame for that input on both player one and player two side. Hope you all fall in this pretty pretty straightforward I think but we know there's any issues okay so let's run the game here for a little bit it seems like it's not obviously we, we can't be entirely sure it won't desync but I'm just gonna add some input to my lag here okay I'll go ahead and stop it and then stop the games and let's check our uh, log. Uh, we still got 
some differences here. But it doesn't seem to be as delayed as much as before. What's happening? Okay, let's double check this. So on uh, frame 851, we have player one side has a value of five. Um, and on the uh, client side, player one value is two. So we don't even see two on this side. So the question, where's that two even coming from? So it looks like they do get five, but with a one frame delay. Let's go down here. Same thing here. It's like we get, suddenly we get a one frame delay on the player, on the cl uh, client side. Go down here again, same thing. It's really weird. I don't know where this two is coming from. It's kind of interesting. There's just a random value of two there. And it seems to be our first desync. So what's going on? Well, we fixed the bug with applying the uh, input delay twice. Let's let's double check what we're doing here. Okay, we're, we're applying local side, opponent side for the inputs. Oh, by the way, I did some a little bit of refactoring, so we just have accessor functions um, for our input history here, just so I can I can make changes to it on the implementation side without worrying about how we actually access it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. Okay. So what's going on? Let's let's double check what we're doing here. So this is definitely unusual. First of all, we're not seeing a desync up here. We are getting change values, right? Where are we at? We're not seeing a desync initially, but later on we're getting a desync. And the interesting thing again is there's a two that seems to come out of nowhere. That's the thing that it's very in, unusual to me. Kind of zoom in here so you guys can see this a little, little easier. Uh, anyway, okay. Do we see anything unusual like that again? Okay, here's another mysterious two. Right, what is two? That's going to be the second bit uh, enabled. Uh, well, one from the right. This should be up, down, so it should be down. So we're getting Mysterious down out of nowhere on the player one side. I don't know where that's coming from. Because we're getting, here we have five, 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 and then A, here we get five, 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 five. So five, 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 and then two, and then A. So it's like, it gets like an extra input out of nowhere. It's kind of unusual. Let's check down here. We got five, 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 two, then A. Over here we get five, 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 <laughs> A. So it's very, very strange. And since we once we get desynced, we're pretty, we're desynced for a while. We don't seem to get back in sync at all. And the final time we have a, we have. One, two, three, four, five A's and a two, five A's and an A. This is probably where we close the application. Let's run it one more time and see if we can replicate this issue without any input delay. Just to be sure. Okay, no input delay here. It seems to be in sync. But you know, if we run this test longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. We'll see eventually probably a desync. Okay, let's rerun this tool. Looks like, well, no desyncs yet. I might have to add input delay again. Sorry, packet delay. Okay, so it looks like if we add packet delay, let's add a lot this time, see if we can immediately get a desync. Okay. 
of course it's stuttering because we don't have enough input delay to compensate for 200 uh, or basically 400 round trip milliseconds of uh, packet delay. Okay, let's see what we got here. Hey, right, we got a desync. Awesome. So, do we see a similar issue here? Player one side. Oh, okay. Player one side got two, a two and two A's, and the desyncs with the A here. We got a two, two A's, and a one. So this is actually is very fairly unusual. Um, I wonder where this that's coming from. So we need to log which input we're getting from the uh, from the other player. One thing we can do is we can log every single packet that comes in and, and make sure that the input we're actually applying or recording is the same as when we actually apply on the on that particular frame for the game simulation. So um, we actually do have a log. I think I have it verbose right now. Let me see. Let's open the client side log file. Did we log? Yeah, okay. Okay, but I didn't log the input that we recorded. Okay, so we're gonna have to add more verbose uh, logging here to see what's going on. Okay. So where was our code for recording those inputs? Okay, it was here where we loop through all the uh, inputs recorded in the packet and then recorded it to a history. I'm gonna guess the bug is somewhere here, um, but let, let's log to find out. Oh yeah, clean this up. Okay. So this is uh this is our sending code actually. So the issue could be in the sending code, it could be in the receiving code. Uh everything here looks okay. So I'm guessing we're running up into a boundary because uh we're not seeing the issue a lot. We don't have any network delay on. So what's probably happening is we're running up until the end of our buffer and something odd's going on there. Maybe we're having in, uh, invalid array access or something. We're getting something's going odd going. It's going on here. Okay. Let's see. But it seems for the most part we're applying the right input up for the right frame. So our, our offset calculation is probably fine. Otherwise, we would get a desync there. Okay. So I want to record which inputs we have coming in from the um, from the network here. I want to log it. So I already have this logging code here. We record the input. We log the input and the uh, and the frame. Um, here we're just pulling the value from the input package and recording the frame. It should be the same offset as here. We can do start frame here. Yeah. Let's do start frame plus I. And let's rebuild this, rerun it with input delay. And da, 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 da. okay, probably initially see things are oh we got the input delay on still great so we'll probably get a desync pretty quickly here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's check the first frame we have an input or a desync. That was frame number one forty four. Looks like we we got a, a magical one here. Honestly, this looks like. In this case, this looks like weird packet order problem. 
So we have four, then nine. Over here we got four, then one. But then we get nine, one, eight. And it should be nine, one, eight. But one is up here. That's unusual. Yeah. That's very unusual. Down here we get two, zero, one. Then on this side we get two, zero, zero, one. One. And then we got one, one, nine, zero, one, one. 888 eight, eight. so it's like missing a 9 entirely that's also weird okay let's check this initial frame 144 uh da, 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 da. so let's open yeah it should be here so when we receive the packet this is important make sure to set up logging for all your uh, network traffic because this is really going to help you track down these kind of bugs. Okay, Give me a second here. I'm going to verify something. Cool. Sweet. Okay, we're on frame 144 on the client side. We see we receive for frame 135, 0, in frame 136, 0, 37, 138, da, da, da. so 139 is four 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 six six one. Oh, um, give me a second here. Something's odd. Um, not what I really expected at all. I should have, I was expected at frame one forty four, the value of one because that's what gets used on that side. Oh, okay, it's right here. It's 144. But everything else before is strange. We get 446. Six. And a value of f 4. Oh, okay, that's all. That's correct. Never mind. That's what we expect. Cool. So it looks like we're actually getting this value of 1 from the network. Let me count these real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. It's interesting that the final frame in the packet is the is the, is the problem frame. You see that's one here. The value is one. Whereas on the um on the host side one comes a frame later. We got a nine and a one. It's really odd. Four one. Here it should be four nine. That is very strange. Any thoughts? <laughs> uh, actually, I wasn't prepared for this bug to happen, but it is a good opportunity to see how it worked through this kind of problem. Why would the final frame be a problem? My guess is we're not actually properly uh, copying the entire buffer over. So 
So we're manually copying each frame's input over. Mom, that would be my guess initially, but sadly the only thing we can do is log both sides and see what's going on. So Yeah, this is the fastest way to do it. This is one of the reasons I want to show people. Like, things like breakpoints are great, but when you start dealing with uh, synchronization, it's, it becomes a huge pain in the ass to uh, set breakpoints. Unit test. <laughs> Unit test is something um, they don't get used too much in game development, actually. And unit, unit test don't fight, doesn't find bugs for you unless like your code is already working. Um, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna log this, and then uh, we're gonna also log the f the inputs we're sending. Okay. Oh, I don't want to know what that's about. You might see unit testing in some larger organization, but it's just not going to happen with the pace games have to be developed. Um, let's see. It's really hard to put, like, for example, game design into unit tests. Usually it's kind of like vague and you don't really know as a designer necessarily all the potential states your game can get into. So, yeah. Okay. Well, input start index. Let's see. It's input. I, I do this game frame, blah, 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 blah. Okay. right here okay that should be good enough let's let me know if it's any issue with the stream because I am using like this uh, packet delay tool so let's rerun our game da 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 turn on input delay network delay does it get chunky? Yeah, it does, and stop it, and then stop our game. Hopefully, we get the sync here. Yeah, we do. Again, let's say let's look for frame two forty two seventy four. Okay. Oops. Sending 274, receiving input frames 274. Okay. So interesting. 274, all the input we received is zero? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Okay, let's check the uh, host side. Host. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're sending input 
zero on 274 actually. Huh. Wait, am I recording something wrong? What am I, what am I missing here? These are all zero. Oh no, okay, it's not all zero. But yeah, 274 is, uh, yeah, input is zero. We can see the resolving buffer here. Wait, what? Okay, yeah, we're setting. It makes sense we're resetting it multiple times because we're not up opening that frame. Oh, I know the bug. I know the bug. The issue is when we pull the input. We're not doing it just once for that one frame. We're pulling it and we're sending it each frame, right? But if we're paused on a particular game simulated frame, we're going to pull for that frame again and write over our local input or maybe send that input as well. But on the remote side, they've already recorded off that input. So what we need to do is we don't need to actually record our pulled input every time we loop through this. We only need to do it the first time. So what we can do is add a new variable. Uh, just a boolean here to record where, where I want to put it. Okay. Okay, let's do bool update pulled input to true. And what we can do here is just put blocks around here. So when you're writing netcode, you have to be very, very careful about every little thing. Um, And we'll only enable this variable when we've actually ticked the game again. So so this should fix the bug. I actually did run into this when I was uh, doing some c code refactoring effort. I wanted to save it for the stream, and it's good that I did because I actually forgot about it. I'm almost left in the fix. <laughs> okay. Didn't have enough coffee to remember that issue, but it's, it's good we found it together. All righty. Um, so everything looks good here. If we look at the log, we should see no desync immediately. That's good. And then let's add lag. Tons of lag. Okay. Stop the lag. Stop the game. And what what do we get? Hey, look at that. No no desyncs. Fantastic. So just to review what I did here if it wasn't clear. Um So I just added a new uh, variable here that lets us enable 
uh, polling and recording input on our local game client. Once we've already polled it and sent that input over the network, we can't change it, right? If we change it, that means the input we use locally and used remotely could be different, which means we see different results on each side. As we said, we always need to apply the same input on the same frame for both sides. So this is just a guard against that. Because um, one of the things that can happen is when we add more, this is why we're seeing it when there's input, I'm sorry, when there was network latency added is because we were not getting input from the client for that frame we needed, so the game needed to pause right we have this update next next frame um boolean here and when that's false we loop through the game loop again pull again record a new input locally but we've already sent off the uh, input we pulled previously and it would be different so yeah Necromancy, yes, it is delay-based netcode, but it is the base infrastructure you need for rollbacks. You can't do rollbacks without having delay-based netcode first. It's part of it. Okay. Um, so I hope that solution makes sense to people. Um, I don't necessarily need a new variable here. I could use like record off the last pulled frame, but yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the foundations of these of uh, finding game net networking. I think it demonstrated pretty well how you can fix these kind of bugs. Uh, we both showed an issue where if you record, if you use the wrong <laughs> frame, uh, the input for the wrong frame, then it obviously can desync. But also, if you're not careful and you overwrite your same, uh, the input for the same frame that you've already sent off over the network, then you're going to get a desync as well. So yeah, we fixed that. There's other kind of uh, desync bugs that are caused by your game simulation not being deterministic or depending on some external variables that you're not recording. But um, that's something you're going to run into when you have rollbacks. We haven't got there yet. Uh, we'll fix those bugs if they appear when we get to them. But in general, if you're careful, your game simulation is going to be deterministic, and you're not going to actually have to debug a lot of those uh, desync issues. Most of the desync issues I've seen are caused by like this, not handling input correctly. Um, it's, it's something you can really easily mess up if you're not careful, especially when you get into multi-threading. So in our case, we don't have multiple threads for running the network on like a separate thread. Uh, but in general, you would. Um, and you could easily overwrite the same buffer that you're reading from or if you're not really, really careful. Um, but probably not going to do that on this project. Um, but those kind of issues become a huge pain in the ass to fix. So yeah, is there any questions about this? I wasn't going to do a too long of a stream this time. Um, I do kind of want to show some stuff, I guess, while we have time with a clumsy tool here. Um, this works great if you're just doing PC debugging because it just you can apply it in general to um, all your network traffic, either TCP, U UDP. In our case, our game is UDP, so I'm just applying it to UDP so it doesn't affect my stream, which I think is might be tcp but actually it could be udp so it might have as far as i i'm aware it doesn't seem to be having huge issues right now but let me know if there is but yeah if we re rerun the game again i want to show a few things um okay so right now oh well minimize this window it's getting in the way right now if i run the game it looks smooth right both sides um and if i had a little bit of lag I don't know if you remember, so we have five frames of input delay, right? So in theory, if I add up to five frames of um, network latency, so five times 16.666 repeating milliseconds, we should be fine because it compensates for that lag. So let's test that theory here. Uh, what is it? 16.0 times five. So theoretically up to eight, 83, 84 milliseconds of one-sided delay should be fine. 
So let's add that and start. It's a little chunky, it's not perfect, but it seems to be okay. I, I could add an indicator of uh, of um, frame drops if I wanted to. Okay, let's add a little bit more. Let's say 100 on one, one side. Oh, it's getting chunky now. That means we've already gone past that input uh, delay barrier, right? We're starving inputs at this point. We're waiting for inputs from the other player. So we have to pause the game simulation. Okay, I'm just going to double check to see if there's no other desyncs. Okay, great. And uh, let's add a little bit more. 300. Pretty much, one side, if you have one side of 300 millisecond input uh, network latency, you can forget it. You're not going to be playing any games. So you can see how you probably can't see um, my side, but uh, I'm getting a huge amount of delay. Every time I press a button, it takes like a second for the game to react. It's, it's, it's quite awful. <laughs> um, the other thing that can happen is packet loss, right? Um, smooth right now. Let's just turn on packet loss and see what happens. 10%, not a big deal. Again, we have those 10 frames of, uh, of input buffer to compensate for any packet loss. Let's increase that to like 40 or something. See what happens. That seems pretty okay. So if this tool is correctly dropping packets, we're not, not having a bad t time here. <laughs> Let's just bump it up to 90%. And yet I can't even update. I'm pressing the button. I don't know if you can see it. Well, hold on. Yeah, I'm pressing button. Nothing's happening at all. We're dropping too many frames. Put it back down to 60. We should get something. 60, nothing. Okay. Seems like the tolerance is about 40%. But we might be completely desynced at this point, unfortunately. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think we're just desynced at this point, so we're going to have to restart it. So it looks like we do have an issue of ultimate desynchronization that we can't recover from if we have too much packet loss right now. Yes, yeah, the thing with packet loss, if you have too much, it can just you can just have complete desynchronization. It can happen. Um, the way you can compensate for that is actually resend. You can make a request to resend packets for ones you don't have, uh, for the frames of input you don't have yet. So that's something we, we could add here. Uh, I, I, it's one of the things I think I'm just going to leave to at least it leaves an exercise for you guys. So you, I think it. Uh, it's not too big of a task to implement a request for old packets, for old input uh, input frames. So, uh, it can drop. I don't know. If, I don't know if it has that kind of level of granularity on controlling packet loss. I used to use an old tool called Windows Network Emulator. I think. It's very, very old and buggy and requires you to install a special driver so it can actually cause huge issues. I noticed it had like, um, after a while, even if I'm not running the program, the driver itself had crazy memory leaks. It would be used up to like all my system memory eventually. So I had to stop using it. So now I'm using Clumsy. Uh, yeah, you can duplicate packets with this too. That shouldn't affect us very much. Um, all kinds of, you can out of order our game should handle out of order just fine um, with the way we've done things already. You know, limiting bandwidth might be an issue, but uh, that's something for you guys can, you all can test if you want. Yeah, probably re more robust, re robust. Robust solution would be a um, actual hardware device for controlling this stuff. That way if you're developing on console or anything, you can actually just plug it in and do that. Um, they, they do that kind of uh, network em emulation. Okay. What 
I think I'm just going to leave it open for questions now. If you want me to like review something, look at look back at what we had i will do that but uh i want to make this a short stream don't no need for a two hour one this time and then next time i think we're going to start doing rollbacks if you don't fix these issues first and you get into rollbacks you're going to have a hard time because you're not going to be able to tell was my desync caused by inputs getting off or is it caused by my actual game simulation not being deterministic is it caused by things like rng somewhere in the code that's being uh, being used. Well, it looks like the game crashed. <laughs> Ran it for too long. Yeah, again, just leaving it up for questions. Ugh. Uh, yeah, you could just record the inputs really easily if you want to. Hold on. Yeah, where did I put that at? Yeah. So, right now I just have this buffer here. And... If you can know how to write a binary file, you just write it all off as player one, player two. It's uh, just one after another is the simplest way to do it, and then read it back in. It's not difficult. If you want a text file, you can do that as well. I'm sure you know how to do that. So, um, and if you want to like rerun the simulation and see if it produces the exact same results, you can just read it back in, run the simulation with just these inputs, add some flags for whether or not you're playing online or playing locally. Um, that kind of stuff I might get to, not in this stream series, but after this is done, I'm considering doing like from scratch fighting game development. Um, we'll use this code as a base, I think, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that maybe if I decide to do that stream series. Do you overwrite the buffer once you start rolling back? What do you, which, which buffer do you mean? You mean the input buffer? Um, there's no reason to overwrite the input buffer. Rolling back doesn't mean you're actually going back in time. It's like it's you're re-simulating just the game state, right? Um, the input should be exactly the same. And I'll 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 show you. Yeah, basically your input history, which is going to be used for both the rollback stuff, so you can rerun the game simulation with the matching inputs on both uh, both player sides, uh, and you can use it for your replay, right? So, using this anymore I think we're done with this variable yeah we're done with this variable this is done too yeah I'm just deleting old code here I don't like this name so I'm gonna
Yes, uh, one of the main causes of replays not working after a patch is the game code has changed, right? So you're getting different results. It's the same issue you have with two game clients desynchronizing over, over a network. If you don't produce the same results on both sides, then you get desynchronization. It's the same. If you change the code, obviously the same inputs are not going to produce the same results. So you might get lucky if some changes not, may not affect the game simulation. Maybe some bug, but eventually it's going to become so divergent, right? The original game simulation and the new one after so many changes that it's not viable to keep those replays around. A lot of other games that are not based on uh, determinic, deterministic lockstep or game simulation uh, are fine. They don't need to have. They can support old replays because they're basically just recording the game state at certain number of frames and then like interpolating between them, but it doesn't really work so well for fighting games. Fighting games are a very discrete kind of um, one action after another frame to frame to frame and it's, it's going to desynchronize very quickly if you don't keep um, the same game silly or the same code right so uh, mighty sandwich yes everything is on YouTube I will post the uh, watch list playlist I already put on my Twitter account but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll link it here just give me a second um, I'll put it here somewhere. I think this is the playlist. Yeah, I'll, I'll just paste it here in the chat. Give me a second. That should be it. This is the first three parts. I'll put part four as soon as this is over with. So, so you can review this as well. Okay, guys, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to ask. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to cut off the stream here in about a minute. Um, yeah, but thanks for coming by. I hope my explanation was clear and coherent. I hope uh, you learned something. If not, um, well, maybe next time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, do I do appreciate everybody dropping by. And uh, yeah, next time I think we'll cover rollbacks, initial stages of getting rollbacks working. So exciting. That should be, that should be, that should be the fun, juicy parts. Um, the goals coming up for the next few streams is basic rollback implementation. After that, we're going to handle um, time synchronization or the whole issue of uneven rollbacks and have played certain games, we'll solve that as well. And maybe some odds and ends after that, how to fix certain issues and stuff. And then the series will be over after that, so maybe two or three more streams, I think. That should do it. Um, after that, I don't know. Maybe I will start my fighting game development series after that, fighting games from scratch or whatnot, so. Or I'll do Maybe I'll do some streaming of Fearless Night development. That's, that's also interesting. Fortunately, there's not a lot, a lot of stuff to show because a lot of our test assets are just not ready to show to um, public yet. So I don't know if I'll do that or not. Maybe it's a far-flung future. Anyway, anyway, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of uh, questions, so I'm going to leave it at, leave it here and uh, finish the stream. Again, thanks for coming by, and see you next time. Hope you learned something. See ya.